Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's how we got to start this one. Back to our 8 a.m. Here we are. Yeah. We're drinking a brand new flavor of Juvie, Cherry Slushy. Launch went spectacular yesterday. I want to say thank you to everybody that showed out, used my code, ordered some Juvie. It's great to have a new flavor on the horizon, man. I mean, it's not on the horizon. It's here, mm -hmm. and I'm drinking it as we speak. This can is a thing of beauty. This I told you guys a story, but we had to make a decision pretty quickly. We didn't want to slow down production, and the only thing that was holding us back, because we had this flavor already from uh, Dead Island 2, mm -hmm. previously known as Slayer Slushy, <clears throat> uh, but the can design was what was giving us the most trouble. The red just didn't look good all over, but I think we landed in a really good spot. Now that you guys can finally see it, I love this can. I love it's, it. It's interesting how, like, situations where, I mean, the first few flavors, I feel like when it came to the juvie, like, tone and gradient, it was, like, easy to make. Like, yeah. All right, you see that? That makes sense. Red, to your point, like, an all-red can, this, I feel like this is the first can where, like, okay, like, we actually got to sit down and, like, kind of innovate here. And it's cool to see where we talked a little bit about, like, Phil Knight and the Nike logo. We don't have to get into that, but... Like deadlines and like problems is what forces you to create like something new. So it's unique yeah. to see like where we were to where we ended up and like going through that process and having like now we have new cans. Brother, new cans. social media is so hard. Like to your point, uh, I know we're talking about branding. I sat down last uh, yesterday morning to film a video for the launch of Cherry Slushy. Bro, I do not know how to record videos in short form. There's so many things that I want to say. So I sat there, recorded for like 10 minutes, and I had to cut that thing down. I really <laughs> wish Instagram Rails was like two minutes. Like, give me 120 seconds. 90's tough. You're, you're built for long form. I am, bro. I'm just conditioned. <laughs> it's like you, you always have to say more than you'll ever need, but you'd rather have more than less when you get into editing because mm -hmm. then you've got to go back and do it again. So I make sure to speak everything that's on my mind. And one of the things that I wish I could have talked about was just branding in general. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I respect a lot of creatives that work in branding and marketing. And if they're working for a company that they didn't start themselves, you obviously have brand guidelines and many through points that have already been laid out for you that you have to play within. And that's the only thing that I don't like working about, uh, working on brand, mm -hmm. just because... We've obviously laid the groundwork for Juvie, more so 100 Thieves than anything, but I'm like, dude, we sh don't need to stay in the confines of this color palette for every single flavor. Like, We're the only <laughs> ones making rules for ourselves. We don't have to stay on the beaten path with the two-tone can. So I think we landed in a really, really great place. Like, it, It's an energy drink that's got a, ch a cherry slushy flavor. Mm -hmm. Like, We don't have to... We don't have to overcomplicate this and come up with the story and the meaning behind the can and every place that you see space on this can had such an intentional story behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think people get a little too wrapped up in what has come before them and what they need to do. But if you're working for a company on brand, I get it. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, let's just break down the, the walls. We don't have any rules here. Let's have fun with it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm happy with the outcome. The jersey, too. I feel like that's kind of like the same. Hundred percent, same thesis. Man, we uh, we've we've had shifts and changes over the last six years since I've been here in our apparel department. Who's leading it? And when our uh, newest group came in, Pat and Jordan and the team that they've hired, Jasmine, she was here actually before Pat and uh, Jordan. But the long story short, to your point, they wanted to. It's not necessarily that they wanted to, but they felt like we had to, and especially coming from John, we got to stay within black, red, and white, especially mm -hmm. for our jerseys. But for me, from my perspective, especially being on Optic for all these years, like they probably sell the most jerseys, I would say, out of any esports organization. There might be a Chinese team or a South Korean team or a European or Brazilian team that poke some holes in that in that thesis. But mm -hmm. in general, like jerseys in esports don't sell as well as especially our apparel. Yeah. So the the primary from this year that was all red, that was something that we thought was a great idea. We've only done like an all red jersey once, and I thought it looked good. A lot of people have a lot of contention. Uh, point of contention is the collar. 
But I love it. And to your credit and what you just brought up, this jersey was just like, fuck it, man. Let's have fun. Yeah. Like, what? This doesn't mean anything. It just <laughs> looks good. And I don't have any fucking problem with that, brother. I love this jersey. <clears throat> I want to see it on some more colors. I want to see it on some different products. Mm -hmm. I think this on a high ground keyboard would look absolutely beautiful. And what's great about the Glacier jerseys is that they're still available. Oh, I've, are they? Yeah. That's why I actually came in this fit today. I think it looks really good with the all-wide pants and the Kith Asics. I'm going to uh, take a photo and, and, and post it, hopefully. 100thieves.com. Yeah. 100thieves.com, Glacier jersey. It's a beautiful thing. We actually have another jersey dropping, too. I don't want to. I was going to poke at it, but. I won't want... talk about it, and maybe that'll give people some hesitation about buying the Glacier. Out of the two, I think the Glacier scratches my itch to have more color and just mess around and have fun. But mm -hmm. uh, the next jersey is really, really awesome, too. Not yeah. to discredit it or discount it at all, but this is just my personal taste. New flavors in the Juvie pipeline, too? Oh, uh, we got a lot of new flavors. We got a lot of new flavors. And they're probably going to come quicker than you thought. Mm -hmm. So all around, like, the CPG aspect of our, our business and our portfolio is just, like, crushing right now. I can't wait for the last three months of the year because... Q4 is obviously when people are spending the most money. I mean, you see it across the board. Advertising and consumer spend as well. Uh, we got the holidays. Mm -hmm. And our Black Friday sale always goes the distance. Our uh, collabs are normally like perfect at that time of year. So I'm not, I, I don't really want to spoil anything, but the last three to four months and even like the new year is going to be pretty electric. Mm -hmm. And that's the other tough part, which I've talked about. It's just... You're sitting here waiting. I, I I mean, all the things that you're looking at besides maybe Cherry Slushy and this jersey, we we settled out on this like six months ago. But normally anything for apparel and even high ground is like a year of planning. You have it set in stone and then you just go through the calendar month by month. So yeah. So I'm like kid on Christmas. It's definitely taught me I think I've become more patient as I've gotten older. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because you get so busy. Like, when you're a kid and you got something to look forward to, there's not really a lot going on besides, like, going to school, which would be pretty monotonous. Even then, you're just sitting in class listening to somebody talk. You're really not that busy. You're just sitting there trapped with your thoughts, <laughs> yeah. and you just can't wait for whatever you're looking forward to. But when you get older, it's a lot easier to be patient uh, because you just got shit to do. Yeah, it's crazy how fast a year goes by once you're, like, not in school and just working. That perception of time just changes, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Everything when you're younger is new and fresh, and you've never experienced it before. And there's obviously exceptions to that rule. But as you get older, time just starts flying by because you've experienced a lot of the things that uh, a human being experiences mm -hmm. in their first 25, 30 years. Yeah. Six months, man, is like fucking nothing. Somebody tells me we've got to wait a year for something. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. It's quite, it's, it's, it really is crazy how your mind changes over time. Yeah, it is. But So still, what's going on with this Detroit Lions jersey? Free JMO. This is, uh, this is the start of my public campaign against the National Football League. Is, is JMO one of the guys that went down for gambling? Yeah. Can't gamble. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're on kick. <laughs> yeah. So he was not on kick. He was in uh, the the practice facility uh, better Word. on college games. <laughs> but he didn't even know he broke any rules. Um, guy tore his ACL two years ago, barely played last year. I've just been so excited to watch him play at full strength. And now i got to wait another six games. But Halfway through the season, bro, he'll come in, <clears throat> fresh legs, ready to go. I mean, he's going to be ridiculous. But also part of it was I didn't really have too many clean clothes. So it's like, you know what? Fuck it. Today's a free JMO day. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, so, hey, you got to you gotta roll with the punches. Wore a wife beater last week. I was like, okay, I guess I can wear a jersey this week. I guess it's kosher. You got a wife beater on underneath there? No, I don't have any clean ones, so. Tough. <laughs> I, was, I was really looking forward to gold chain, wife beater Joe. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, it's good to be back in the studio, man. We're filming yeah. another episode. Last week, we had a lot of drama going on with mm -hmm. uh, Kick, XQC, Pokey, Hassan. Uh, you name it, we talked about it. I think the dust has sort of settled. Mm -hmm. I, 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 You know what? The internet is still on their Pokey shit. Yeah. I keep seeing clips on our For You page. I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about at this point anymore. But it's crazy. Like In general, we've always said it. Drama is just good for business. If you can tolerate it mentally, 
as a creator, there's just so many people that want to come in, whether it's troll or support you. As soon as the conversation picks up, man, drama is just the quickest way to relevancy. Oh, 1,000%. And I, I hate that, but that's just the way the world works, man. <laughs> it really is. Especially, too, with the internet, like, also how you mentioned, like, internet doing what it typically does. It's like a week of this shitstorm of Kick and Twitch and Pokemon and XQC, and now it's like, oh, it's a pretty quiet week on the internet. Like, there's not a ton going on. It's just over. It's like, yeah, has anything thing. happened? I was I was sitting in the shower this morning, racking my brain. I'm like, what gaming topics do we have that are relevant? We got, I mean, the big thing this week is uh, Roster Mania. Roster Mania, yeah. So, Call of Duty, oh my fucking God, I yeah. completely forgot. So, I mean, I didn't forget. I just, it's tough with the position we're sitting in because there's obviously not a lot I can talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've already seen, I think, leaked uh, database info. I think Toronto is actively uh, has Insight, Kleenex, and Scrappy. I think I saw that tweet yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, it's <laughs> tough now because I don't know if like, wait, did I see that in an internal email? or Because <laughs> yeah. I'm almost positive I saw a screenshot of all the teams that people have been speculating about and who is assigned to what team in the database? I don't know. Yeah. I think Toronto would be really silly to allow uh, that core to walk away. 100%. But I think the biggest conversation is round optic. Yeah. They let Ghosty go. They let Hook go. Mm -hmm. And now they're there with uh, Dashy and Shotzi, mm -hmm. which I think any team in the league would hope to be th uh, that core. Yeah. I think anybody would take that core. Kind of seems like, too, everybody's waiting for them to make their move. Well, that's the tough part about the offseason. It's always going to be that way. Yeah. You know, Optic really leads the charge because, in general, I would say most players want to go compete for the green wall. Yeah. It's the most popular team. I, I, I It's a good business decision. Yeah, I understand you know? our place in the stars, and yeah. I think there's been a lot of rumors flying around the couple of the boys on LA Thieves, our team, our home squad, or... The gentlemen that fight for us on stage. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Well, today, by the time this goes live, um, our video about Optic or about Octane will be releasing at noon today. Do you want to talk about that? Oh, absolutely, man. All right. We we need to take a a, a, a a lot of time on this <laughs> on this podcast to talk about this man, Sam Octane Larue. Guy delivered us five trophies over the course of three years. I mean, maybe four. I always forget just because we went through Cold War, then we dipped out of the Call of Duty, came back. But his contributions have just been second to none. Before you keep going, if anybody watches this and doesn't see the video, Octane is retiring. Octane is officially retired from Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he's just excited to get back home. He's going to move back to Virginia from what I've heard. And he's going to restart his life that he had before. And I think he's going to be going full-time with content. Yeah. And that's the thing about LaRue that I've always had a lot of respect for. Even while practicing and going through everyday regiment uh, in his pro career, he was always one that did as much work as possible in the back end to get YouTube videos out and stream. I really do miss the era of Call of Duty when streams were, uh, or when scrims were streamed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get why we don't do it now or why it doesn't happen as often, but... In general, I think like Call of Duty, besides Search and Destroy, it's not really rocket science. There's only a couple ways to play the maps and rotations on hard points on mm -hmm. each map. But I, I, I get it, man. It's it's like a stressful environment to be a part of. But when the scrims are over, LaRue has been consistently uploading. I don't know what it was like this year, but I always would look back at his channel during past seasons and mm -hmm. see him just grinding away. And he's a funny guy too, man. He knows how to operate on stream. Yeah. You know, a lot of people... Uh, I think at least in the early era of streaming with pro players, there was like a ego and a pride that they could not set aside where most creators turn it on a little bit. Like by default, everybody's not just high energy 24-7. Yeah. You can tell people that force it out where their personality on camera, there's just no way that meets 
how they carry themselves on like social mm -hmm. with like the photos they tweet out on Instagram. You'll have people that are just like, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> Welcome to a brand new video. Yeah. And then they're posing at the club with like diamond fucking chains on and like with a hard ass caption mm -hmm. from some rap song. I mean, I'm guilty of that too, but in some <laughs> aspect of my life, I feel like I'm that hard, but I'm not. <laughs> but my point is like LaRue is... He knows how to play the game, but a lot of the personality I see him accentuate online is pretty accurate to who I've seen him off, off, off stream as well. So yeah. I'm excited for his next chapter. Going back to you mentioning that you get why people don't stream scrims anymore. Can you elaborate on that? Well, in general, it's just you're battling against a, a, you know tough opponents every single day to try to get better. Mm -hmm. And I think people want to win scrims. It's hard for players to fall in love with the process of like, we're just here to improve. Like, we don't need to win every map. But if you're not winning any map, like, I think kind of soaks in, 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 the, in them juices flowing around your head. Like, oh, do we suck? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a really weird dynamic. And then on top of that, since you're trying to work through the kinks, a lot of times like arguments will pop up or disagreements. And, you know, like I said, you want to project some energy on stream, but when you're scrimming, you're locked in mm -hmm. and you don't want to have to worry about the chat. And then if, if you guys have a disagreement while streaming those scrims, the chat will jump on and pick sides. And then that pits you against each other. Yeah. It's just a lot of, uh, bullshit that you just don't want to bring into the room. Yeah. But back in the day, you know, that was the only way to make money. Like we didn't have salaries on mm -hmm. teams. So we had to, we had to stream like yeah. we're leaving too much money on the table not to. So it's, uh, it's the 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 environment around pro uh, players streaming has certainly changed, but mm -hmm. even beyond that, like going back to Octane, what's tough is that this guy just he has a lot left in the tank. Yeah, in terms of talent, like this is not a decision based off his ability to perform. I think he could still win championships. This is sort of like the issue that every pro player runs into across any title. You just reach an age or a place in your life where the juice just isn't worth the squeeze and you're miserable scrimming every single day. Mm -hmm. You know that you could be having the time of your life playing whatever game you want on any schedule that you want, more time for your family, your personal life, and you kind of just lose the passion to win. Yeah. Like when you're a kid, 16 years old, first getting into full to Call of Duty, at least from my experience, I want to win more than I want to breathe. The only thing I want to do was see some motherfucker disappointed on the other side of the stage. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like I, 100%. I don't want myself to feel that way. I want everybody on the other side of that stage to rue the day they stepped on on the same ground as us. But yeah, I uh, I totally respect Sam's decision. Yeah, I'm bummed. I'm bummed because he's just been like the backbone of a lot of our rosters, and when. It, you know, for me, at least a couple years removed, many years removed from retiring, you know, there's going to be a day and age, maybe a couple years down the road where he'll probably regret not playing a couple more years, at least from my perspective. But that's just my best guess. I feel like that's natural with anything. 100%. It's one of those things where the grass is always greener. You know, mm -hmm. you, I, he can take his time, enjoy himself, and maybe there's a world where it comes back later down the road. But you just lose the passion. You just yeah. can't mentally put yourself where you were when you were 16 years old. Yeah, well, I imagine playing COD for 12 hours a day for, you know, 10 years gets to the point where, yeah, he's got a, his stream's doing well, too. Like, he holds good numbers and making cash and everything you mentioned, too. It's, you know, it makes sense, so. I wonder how often that happens with professional athletes. You know what I mean? You think, like, James Harden, he's probably the best example I could use without really following his career uh, as well as I've followed other professional athletes, I feel like he had some MVP runs, just some incredible basketball play. This guy was throwing up 40 like every single game mm -hmm. for a time there in like OKC and, and Houston. And I feel like he went into the offseason, would come back at the beginning of the NBA season and like be out of shape, just, just doesn't. Chilling with little baby too much. Exactly, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you get reports that he's out at the club, you know, yeah. snowing in Tootsies, man. Like, 100%. Has to happen, right? Like, there's no way you can put, play basketball for 20 years. That and a lot of like LeBron's been in the league for what, 20, 21 years? But now you think back on his high school career, this guy has been literally 
the amount of discipline it probably takes to keep your body at that level for so long, it's got to become just a job at that point. Oh, 100%. I mean, LeBron has been in the NBA for more than half of his life lived. I mean, Brady, same thing. I mean, he was in the NFL for, I think, 24 years. But, yeah, I, like, that's the interesting thing about the concept of, like, following your passion and working in your passion. And obviously, like, if you play, like, professional basketball and you're making hundreds of millions of dollars at LeBron's level, you know, it's it's definitely worth it. But yeah. it's certainly, I feel like, for like, James Harden and them, it, I'm sure it feels like a job to them versus just, like, that love of the game at some point definitely leaves. I just always want to know, though, how it compares to, a, like, a professional esports player. Uh, I would imagine it's pretty similar, you know? I mean, in terms of, like... I just feel like pro esports players just get tired of the game they're playing quicker than any professional athlete. And maybe it's a money-making thing. I don't know, but... I feel like it would be easier to go play basketball every day than ha not easier in the sense of the amount of effort it takes, mm -hmm. but uh, just the the passion and the excitement that you have to get back in the lab. Maybe yeah. it would be different if, like, for a football season, you have uh, 16 games you play, 17 weeks, everybody gets a bye week. 17 games now. 17 games now. Yeah. Jesus. Is there is it an 18 week season? Oh, wow. As of like two years ago. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. But you're on the biggest stage once a week playing in front of, like, 30,000 people. You know what I mean? With Call of Duty, you're playing online league matches and you get, like, five majors and the season's over in, like, four months. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just feels like that. Pra like, was our 10-hour practice days worth it six days a week? I don't yeah. know. Well, I feel like, too, with, with eSports, Call of Duty specifically, because you obviously have Counter-Strike and League, and those have been going on for 10-plus years. But a game like COD... And I'm curious, this is just from an outsider's perspective, like when you're playing a new game every year from a different developer, I feel like it's just very burn and turn in the sense of like, it's got to be exhausting to like every year I have to relearn the mechanics of based off whatever developer like made that game, go through your scrims, figure it out. You p just grind nonstop for like four months and then you're chilling for five months. And then you're just doing it again. Well, this season's weird because normally Champs is at, like, the end of August. Yeah. And they only have two months to just, like, hang out. Now everybody's got five. It, it's a weird dynamic. I don't mm -hmm. know. Let's get off the topic. All right. We'll never figure this one out. Yeah. But best of luck to Sam Octane LaRue. Mm -hmm. I, I hope and I think he's going to stay a part of the organization, do content with us full time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be tougher since he'll be in Virginia, but that man's got the golden ticket. As, as long as he wants to be a part of 100 Thieves, he will be. And his contributions have been second to none. We obviously put him in the Hall of Fame last year. I know a lot of people might have thought that was preemptive, but for an organization that's as new as we are, you can argue both sides around a Hall of Fame, but they are they were integral in uh, our success, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure that they understood how much we appreciated them. And Octane's got those banners in the compound forever, yeah. and they'll never be taken away from him or uh, – his legacy. So we'll see, man. I'm excited for the content era. I think he's going to crush it. Yeah. We'll see how well he can network. Like a lot of people don't play that game. I'm not a big fan of, and I think I would have had a much better career in content if I was more inclined to like collaborate and really take it seriously about getting in front of other people's communities and audiences. But I, I'm just not one that likes to I like to be able to do it myself. Like it's not even on some prideful shit. Maybe it is, but I've just always kind of stuck to the people that I grew up with and don't really play that game as well as I should. But I think Larue, if he sticks with the Call of Duty community, I know they're gonna have his back. But see what the next next couple years look like, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Shout out Octane. Shout out Octane, brother. I still would have really loved to see like a year where he only had to run a sub. I, I know people think that AR, Flex, SMG, these roles, for the most part, look, you're not going to see Kleenex use an AR at the same level as Octane, mm -hmm. and you probably vice versa, but all these guys can pick up that gun and shoot. And uh, I think the roles just get a little complicated sometimes when you're trying to put the team, team together in the offseason, but Octane was just talented. What a fucking guy. Yeah. Cocktane.
Cocktained. <laughs> I still think he should have changed his name to LaRue like three years ago. <laughs> I really, I really believe that, bro. Can you imagine he hits a snipe on main stage LaRue. championship Sunday? LaRue. <laughs> I think LaRue would have been such a cold. It's got a ring to it. IGN. It really does. Xbox gamer tag, mm -hmm. PSN. LaRue. PSN. <laughs> yeah. Mine, uh, Callus doesn't really roll off the tongue or Haig, you know? Yeah, Haig is. Callus and Haig are tough. <laughs> Callus and Haig. Callus and Haig. Callus and Haig, that sounds like a, like a law firm. <laughs> yeah. Do <laughs> you think if we studied for two years diligently, we could pass the bar? Uh, I mean, yeah. Should it's, we do a challenge where we both? It's literally just a test of memory. Yeah. Just get a bunch of fucking flashcards for it. Is that all it is, you think? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Well, maybe we'll arrive back at this topic another time. That could be our, is that a, <laughs> our, our grimace trend with cherry juvies? It's like, <laughs> this is stupid, but I don't even know why I'm saying this. You drink, a, you drink a cherry juvie and all of a sudden you're just subject to two years of studying for the bar. <laughs> That's like a, that fantasy football Just a personal punishment. Hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brother, this McDonald's team's got to be over the moon. Oh, my with God. With this Grimace milkshake. It's... the I watch every single one. Oh, it's been incredible. If it pops up on my TikTok feed, I'm watching <laughs> the Grimace meme. Dude, one thing that pissed me off, though, is like there's some tweet that reposted like a bunch of clip outs of the Grimace trend and the comment was like, Gen Z is so good at absurdist humor. I'm like, I saw that tweet. I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, what, like, absurd, like, who's putting a label on this? I'm like, it's just a trend on TikTok. All right. Everybody pump the brakes here. We don't have to like get into the psychoanalysis of like the type of humor for a generation. That just pissed me off. But so I, I bet that person works in tech for sure. Coin brain. The amount of people that I I see on Twitter that just overcomplicate <laughs> communication to other people. Oh my god! It's like, listen, man. There's certainly an echo chamber of other people that work in tech that probably think and tweet and articulate the thoughts you have in your head the same as you, which is why I see all these threads and. Like you said, psychoanalysis and really just trying to find a deeper meaning in everything that is happening in our, around us and on social and our world. Mm -hmm. But fuck, man. I think there's more people that just want to tell it like it is or <laughs> just watch things happen in front of them without like going into a goddamn 10-page paragraph. Yeah, there is. 10-page thesis fucking. <laughs> yeah. Essay. Yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson of fucking gener generational humor. Well, he's content. mad annoying, bro. <laughs> yeah. I love Neil deGrasse Tyson in like the early 2010s when he was like coming into popularity. And then he started like tweeting shit about like Santa Claus and Christmas. Like, it is physically impossible. <laughs> no fucking shit, man. <laughs> It's called magic. You ever heard of it? <laughs> yeah. Like, he just rains on parades. And, and like, thankfully, some people started clapping back at him like hey <laughs> fucking he's a scientist you know i know brother but like you got a duty as a scientist you got that many people protect listening. the kids all right? like would you have some fun rather than rain on everybody's parade with your equations and <laughs> theories like yeah brother we know santa claus can't make it all around <laughs> but that's why they're magical reindeer <laughs> they're really fast like buddy they're really fast reindeer <laughs> Maybe we should bring bullying back. <laughs> I was bullied. Nice fucking bow tie, you nerd. <laughs> Such a smart guy, but man, like, just learn how to talk to people. Clearly he has. I mean, he's had an unbelievable career. But there yeah. has just been instances. Cosmos, Cosmos was fire, I will say. Great show. Just instances over the years where I'm like, dude, we already know you're smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need to beat a dead horse here. He's like... It, uh, I I still love Neil deGrasse Tyson, but that comment makes me think of like chess players too, where it's like we get it, you know, we know you can move pieces of wood around the board, and you're really smart, and you know all the combos, but you don't need to throw it in my face twenty four seven. All right, yeah, fucking grandmaster bullshit. <laughs> Why don't you go solve fucking cancer instead of telling me how good you are and smart? That's 
Not everybody, but look at us, dude. Some miserable folks. <laughs> I, am. I love it. I love it. <laughs> some something in this cherry that just got me got me on my soapbox today. Great. But you know. You guys know what I'm talking about though. You guys have seen the tweets over the years of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Bro, there's gotta be somebody that's done an article about these moments where he just sounds like an asshole. Cause I swear to God, I like I'm not just having a knee-jerk reaction holding a grudge against this guy. This has happened. I know I'm not making it up. Yeah. Besides, There's... like, the Christmas comment, I can't think of the other ones that I've seen, but I damn near blocked that man on Twitter just so I would never come into contact with his negativity around some of the greatest things we have in our life, and he's just shitting on them. Just got to gotta protect the inner child, some yeah, of these things, you know? You do. But... All right, I'll try and be a little more optimistic for the rest you don't of the show. have to. I mean, <laughs> well, we're not being... We are being judgmental, but we're not. We're just being ourselves. Fuck it. Yeah, whatever. Unapologetically um, ourselves. Um, any outreach from Kick for you since the last epi? Dude, unfortunately, man, I've been waiting. Got on a little this treasure phone to goblin ring. running into the compound for a little meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Diablo Four reference, <laughs> brother. Ew. I wish mythical creatures existed in some capacity, <laughs> like reindeer. <laughs> Or yeah. do exist. God fucking damn it. Sorry. God. It Carry would be on. it <laughs> would be dope to have like a little treasure goblin like like Dobby. I saw bringing me prizes. Megalodons. I saw a TikTok unconfirmed on the shark species, but there's a, a British submersible um down about seven hundred meters, not a few thousand, uh watching a bunch of large adolescent sharks feasting on a whale carcass. Like, are these baby Megs? Question mark. I'm like, I don't know. I'm sure, scientists would disprove it in the comments, but be sick. Yeah, man, I get trying to learn as much as we can about our Earth, but I ain't getting in the ocean. We talked about this. No. Uh, anybody that's getting in a submarine that's not a part of like a military. I went on like a two hour, I'm a little sluggish today because as soon as my head hit the pillow, fired up TikTok. Literally my entire for you page, I couldn't get out of it. It was just James Cameron explaining the flaws of the Ocean Gate sub build and why you shouldn't use carbon fiber versus titanium or steel. And what ended up happening. Yeah, I'm over the submarine, man. Yeah. Um, but point being, I'm like, this is all just confirming why I will not be getting into the ocean anytime soon. Shark attack in Egypt. You see that video? No. This dude got mauled by a shark in Egypt. Whole things recorded. That's a bad day right there. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's very you bad. You know, day. <laughs> I feel like I could do a pretty good job of avoiding sharks. Yeah, by not going in the water. The ocean just fucking freaks me out, man. Dude, it's terrifying. Like, I don't want to go explore in there. Sam Keen has been building Juvie. This guy does like open water ocean swimming for fun. I'm like, brother. I respect your level of fitness, man. You got a motor unlike anybody I've ever met, but mm -hmm. just go do the laps in the pool. I'd rather jump out of a plane, skydive, than be in like 100 feet of open ocean water. Did I ever tell you my Red Bull skydiving story? Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. All right. So there's a, a mythical bull with wings. <laughs> I'm on its back. Back in 2012, when I first signed with Red Bull, we get a year into the contract, and Destiny 1 is coming out. And this is a really big deal. Obviously, Destiny got even bigger when it released, but Destiny 1, people were anticipating this game to be a massive success. Actually, not to cut you off, uh, my first girlfriend, we broke up because of Destiny. Good. Yeah. Got to you. Got to weed out the duds, man. If she can't get down with Destiny, then <laughs> I told her my brother was in town from Chicago. I had to hang out with him. Well, why'd you lie to her? Well, I don't want to tell her. Hey, I can't hang out anymore because I'm gonna go grind Destiny for eight hours with my boys on yeah. PlayStation. It's tougher when you're that younger. did come out after. Um, when she got upset and. I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to play Destiny. <laughs> Anyways, regardless, sorry, go on. No, to, to your point, not to go on a rant real quick, but I will say, like, uh, honesty in a trusted relationship, like, there isn't anything that I need to lie to Haley about, and mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, like, yeah. I can tell her anything, and I don't, I never feel like I'm hiding something, which is a, a very, uh, it's freeing. So, 
If you're not in a relationship where you're afraid, if you're in a relationship where you're afraid to tell your significant other things that you're thinking or things that you want to do, you got it. You got to nip that in the butt. Like you're going to, if you're, if you plan to marry and get with your significant other for the rest of your life, you just got to be completely honest. Like you can't be for holding sure. yourself hostage, but back 2012, 2013, destiny one's coming out. Rebel wants to do this whole activation where they're going to put uh, me or flame sword uh, on like 60 million Red Bull cans. And it's all weighted around destiny. Call of Duty was always really tough with Red Bull because as a brand, they don't support human-on-human -human violence. So mm -hmm. I was kind of like the kid kicked to the curb uh, where they, they couldn't really like claim me. They it made me like a quote-unquote Red Bull athlete, but they never Step promoted job. it, never talked about it, whatever. So Destiny comes and, you know, like Halo, there was always this argument that it's, oh, it's aliens, it's, it's fiction, so we can do this. And uh, they wanted... I think the activation was they wanted us to jump out of a plane uh, and deliver the first like publicly sold copy, hard disk, physical disk uh, at a Walmart in Arkansas. Like we would land in front of the Walmart and hand <laughs> off. This is a true story. <laughs> and I've told this for people that have been watching me for a while. So apologies if uh, you're getting a repeat. But mm -hmm. this thing starts moving really quickly. And I told the lead at Red Bull Gaming at the time, I'm like, man, I obviously would love to be a part of this larger than life opportunity, the Red Bull cans, but I'm like 50 50 about jumping out of a plane. That's just never been in the cards for me. I've never really <laughs> had a desire to go skydiving. And I'm a pretty risk adverse individual as it is, dude. I'm afraid of a lot of things. And like, death is one of those things. And planes. Now, here's the <laughs> rub, though. And planes, of course. Here's the rub. You have to do a solo jump. This isn't like a tandem thing with an instructor. <laughs> Is that even legal? Is that street legal? No, but it even gets worse. To get your certification, you need to do like 10 solo jumps or 11 or 12, some wild number. You have to do this quickly because the time of the game and release, poor planning on Red Bull's part. Mm -hmm. And so to get us our certs uh, in time to do this Destiny Arkansas Walmart thing, we basically had to ramp up and do all of our training immediately. So I wasn't even going to be able to do my first jump, jump tandem. They wanted me to do a six-hour class, which I did, in a, in, a, in a classroom, and then go jump out of a plane for the first time the next day. Bro. So at this point, I'm still 50-50. <laughs> we sit through this six-hour class. He's going through all the terrible things that could happen, all the way... All the ways you need to handle yourself when you're in the air, you know, reading your uh, levels, your altitude. If this happens to the parachute and it gets tied up, you got to swing your way out. Oh, I'm like, Jesus. brother, I wouldn't trust myself to like grill for the first time after <laughs> somebody teaches me. I like, I want to watch, like, I need to, I need to get up to speed. I need to watch this, understand it, experience it. Yeah. I'm shitting bricks. <laughs> we get through this six hour course and uh, the next day we come back. I made a decision that night. I'm like, there is no way I'm jumping on this plane. And I now have to have a very awkward conversation with like five people from Red Bull. As we're in the van on the way there, it's like an hour and a half away. Everybody's kind of like talking themselves into it, talking themselves out of it. It's like me, Proofy, uh, Flame Sword. On the way to the airfield? On the way to the airfield. So you made the decision you want to go, haven't told the people at Red Bull, but you're in the van heading to the plane to go do your by jumps. all accounts i'm skydiving but <laughs> <Okay>. last night <laughs> i was sweating i mean i didn't sleep at all and i knew there's just no way for the first time ever i'm jumping out of a plane after learning for six hours not doing just watching somebody tell me what to do mm -hmm. just not I, I, there's no fucking shot yeah I'm, just, I'm a pussy, I guess. I don't know. I just can't I, I do think, that. No, I think that's very reasonable. This is where it to gets... To not want to do. I wouldn't call you a pussy for that. This is where it gets crazy. We show up to the airfield. We're walking down the strip to go to uh, the hangar to get all suited up. They've got a million people jumping out of planes that day because they're competitive skydivers <laughs> all practicing for the next event. Mm -hmm. I shit you not, Hector can corroborate this. Everybody that was there... This is a true story. As we're walking into the hangar, we see everybody running over to the airfield. We turn and look. Some guy who's been doing this for decades slammed straight into the ground, did like a red turn, 
because as you get closer to the ground, there's certain levels of altitude where you just like don't turn mm -hmm. and you like you're going in for a land you need to be delicate but these guys are obviously like seasoned yeah. veterans so they know what they're doing this guy slams into the ground and breaks like both legs and is rushed to the hospital in the ambulance oh my god and if i wasn't gonna jump then i damn sure wasn't <laughs> jumping now <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> So what'd you, what'd you say? What'd you tell? How'd you I'm do? like, guys, there's just no shot. There's no way I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. I know that I kind of strung you guys along here. I thought that I was going to be able to do it, but I'm just not going to. And then, bro, the first jump that Flame Sword, Proofy, and all these guys do, they, uh, like, Proofy ended up in a cornfield, like, five miles away. <laughs> like, completely missed the landing. But the fact that he did it was wild to me. Yeah. So Flame Sword, uh, being the adrenaline junkie that he is, he follows through with it. Yeah. Does all the certs and ended up on 60 million cans of Red Bull. So good on him. Or oh, literally watch somebody almost die. What a wild story. <laughs> like, hey, we're going to have you. Oh, you want to do this? Like, oh, let me look at the contract real quick. Oh, it says I have to do 10 solo jumps to get certified in the next three days. Bro, the <laughs> so fact, I be on 60 million cans. The fact that they couldn't even find the time for me to do just like a tandem jump. Yeah. I'll never skydive. I, I've always wanted to, but I never will. Yeah. I just don't think it's... <clears throat> I would like to, but also there's the aspect of the the fact that it's just the process of it. You know, we talk about how we're... I won't make you complicit in this, but I'm, I'm very built for comfort, you know? The well, act, I'm certainly complicit with that. Yeah. The act of like, oh, I got to go to the airfield. I got to get up in the plane, jump, this whole thing. For like 30 seconds. I mean. That's why I don't go to sporting events. I'll just watch that dude, that the Red Bull guy that jumped from like 130,000 feet. Like that that scratches my itch when it comes to skydiving. Some people are just built different, man. I agree with you. Yeah. I just don't. No matter Self, what self level. Self-preservation though, you know. What level of enjoyment that could possibly be. I just don't think it's worth the process. I mean, in, in college, I'd have buddies, like, drinking on the roof. They're like, come up here. You know, I'd, I'd get up there. i climb up the stairs, and it, it'd be like a bit of a jump to get up on the roof. I'm, like, 25 feet in there. I'm like, you know what? I, I think I'm good drinking on the lawn, you know? Retweet. Yeah. So just, you know, there's that part of me, too. Retweet, dude. So, yeah, wild, though. <laughs> yeah, fuck skydiving, man. Yeah. Respect. <laughs> Respect if you do it. Some people are just just want it more. Maybe maybe we run it back with a with a juvie promo. No, you drink a grimace shake. All of a sudden, you're you're flying through the air with no <laughs> with with no parachute. <laughs> like oh fuck, here we are. Um. All right. Well, I was just about to talk about the dream I had last night, but it wasn't worth it. Doesn't make any sense. It had to do with <laughs> airplanes. My dream, dude, okay, fine, I'll say it real quick. My dream was that, it was actually a nightmare. I went to the airport, and they, like, misplaced my bag, and they refused to tell me where it was, and I missed my flight, and I'm running around this airport. I woke up, I was ready to fucking commit, I don't know, I, I was ready to do some things. I was angry when I woke up this morning. Maybe that's why I was so pessimistic. I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> but, um... Sorry to hear it, Joe. Moving on. Nightmares <laughs> suck, man. I hate having nightmares. My nightmares used to be like the girl from the ring, and now it's like missing a flight and being angry in an airport. You want to talk about getting older? Did you, have, did you ever have recurring nightmares as a kid, like a common theme? Yeah, my legs didn't work, and Michael Jackson was chasing me, dead ass. Bro, Yeah, I had something similar. I kid you not. It was fucking terrifying. Brother, there was a villain from like a Power Rangers show. I forget. But remember when you had your long hair and I told you that day that you look like it was the first time that I unlocked that <laughs> core memory as a kid. I unlocked a nightmare for you. With Brother, <laughs> it was just like this long, gangly looking motherfucker that had Thanks. long hair and would uh, chase me and I couldn't speak. I couldn't move. I'd be there with like a family member and they just come grab me. And it was just terrifying. And I hadn't had that since I was like 10 years old, probably. And you looked... Spitting image. I'm glad you cut the hair. Glad you, you look good, bro. You look good. Wait, I can't say what I want to say. It didn't sleep wild. You're just like, all right, we're just going to go unconscious for like eight hours. 
And we can't remember anything about that. It's great. Every day. I fucking love sleep. I love sleep, too. But... <laughs> I'm so hung up on the dark humor joke I was going to make about your nightmare. Won't say it. Can't say it. Um, Hunter clipped out. <laughs> clipped out. Okay, we're moving on to the next thing. <laughs> okay. I'm letting you steer the boat today. All right. I don't know what to talk about. Steering this up. Um, esports. Hunter clipped out your quote tweet agreeing with coming back to Counter-Strike and you teasing Hunter T getting into Counter Strike 2 esports. There's a world where it happens. It's got to be the right time, right opportunity, man. I'll always say that. I'm not trying to string anybody along. Yeah. I want to be in Counter Strike one day again. Yeah. Just the economy, man. Mm -hmm. You know, we want Hunter Thieves to be around for a very long time, and our business actually looks very healthy right now, but we definitely need to be uh, very stringent and very realistic about what we're going to spend. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the thing. Like, coming into next year, I don't know what any of our rosters are going to look like. I just don't know. Like, we'll make those decisions when the time comes, but you just have to be smarter about how we spend. Mm -hmm. And it's a long-term play about how we invest in esports. And everybody wants to get super excited about Roster Mania. We're going to try to take as many shots as we can, but... There's certainly, if we want to be around for the next hundred years, there are going to be years where we have to kind of lay off the gas pedal and sort of wait out the macro trends of sponsor interest, how well our CPG business continues to grow. And I'll say this, like we have talked about it on the podcast before, doing those two rounds of layoffs was the hardest thing that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not making it about me, more so for the company as a whole. I said it the first time, and then we ended up doing it again. I don't ever want that to happen. Ever. Ever again. So, if we have to hold down the fort for a period of time where we don't spend as much as other teams are on our esports rosters, that's a world that can be reality. You know, you just have to be... We can't go all in every single year like we have been. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know. Like I'm not trying to reference what you'll see over the next six months and the next year going into 2024, but we definitely have some tough decisions to make around how much we spend, how realistic if we were to even reach like the top of the totem pole of spending in whatever game we play in, are there rosters that are already set in stone that we can compete with even with that spend? So it's it, it's really fascinating to me how often you'll see like pr traditional sports franchises go through like a rebuild era and phase, but that's kind of the the shake and the rub of esports. We don't have a draft. It's not like we have uh, D one college recruits to look at and and understand like okay, if we free up budget. We understand that this year we're not going to probably perform at the level that our fans and the rest of the organization expects us to, there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. But with <clears throat> esports, you know, you can obviously be as diligent as you can about rookies and, and, and scouting players, but it, it's really hard to find like the diamonds in the rough. Yeah. And that and that's like the tough part for me too, even like when you talk about League of Legends. We to Papa Smithy's credit and Joseph Jang, who's like our GM now, they they did a really great job of building out uh, a pipeline of young talent that could potentially be on stage for the LCS. But it's not like even before Papa Smithy was here, we had a, a very good recruiting uh, and, and, and process for finding these guys for our academy team. But beyond like a handful of players, like, since we came into league, and this could sound very ignorant, I haven't fact-checked it. I actually w would love to know, but I just haven't seen a lot of players that played in academy over the last six years that ended up being like tier one, S-tier, upper echelon talent in the LCS. Like Blabber, mm -hmm. I interviewed that kid. That was, He was like my first like real day of 100 Thieves work. I went into like scouting grounds at the Santa Monica headquarters of Riot interviewed all these kids like blabber you could tell this kid was going to be a killer just by the way that he talked 
and how uh, well he applied himself academically, his age, like how he answered. And turns out he's been an incredible player in uh, for Cloud9. But beyond a couple outliers, like I just can't really name a lot of people that have come out of the academy system and have been the next stars of tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Certainly. I think, too, it's interesting when you compare, like, esports and what it's going through now compared to, like, traditional sports where it's, like, with traditional sports, it seems like the Yankees or the Mets, like, you have billionaires running the show. Like, Steve Cohen for the Mets spent $980 million of his own money mm -hmm. to basically buy up the entire free agent market. Esports, like, we're running a business you guys are like running a business and unfortunately you just don't have the luxury of billions of dollars to just tap into you know it's like contingent and constrained to like the money we make and marketing and partnerships and it's just a different a different scene because i feel like a lot of people are from a fan perspective like they just get frustrated when they don't see the best possible team put together which makes sense but yeah and then the the hard part too is like when you make those decisions to spend less, everybody just outwardly, like over the last six months, everybody and their mother has been bitching and complaining about how terribly ran organizations have been. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand how to build a business around esports and yada, yada, yada. All that feedback is fair and true. I went, well, not necessarily true, but I understand why they say these things. Mm -hmm. But they 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 spent the last six months talking about how terrible a business esports is, and maybe not all of the people that are saying those things, but some of that segmented community, with that perspective, if we were to announce a team that we didn't have a big budget for, and we limped into the season, and we're trying to plan for the future, immediately they're just going to say that you don't care, you don't want to win, and why is, does your roster look the way that it does? There's just no, uh, you cannot please everybody. Yeah. And Can't I think it. it's, I understand why people have such uh, harsh criticism for esports teams, but I promise you it's a lot harder than it actually looks. Like, if I'm sitting on the couch watching LeBron James play basketball and he has a turnover in, in, in the last two minutes of a really important game in the playoffs, it's easy for me to be like an armchair analyst, be like, this guy's an idiot. That mm -hmm. was a terrible play. Why did he do that? <laughs> but like... You truly cannot fathom, and I'm not comparing esports organizations to LeBron James, maybe not the best analogy, but anything in life, it is easy to sit back and judge the decisions people make without being in their shoes. Like You don't know the amount of pressure, the amount of variables and the decisions that they're making uh, and where it's coming from that pressure. It's just, it's really hard to be empathetic and walk in somebody else's shoes mm -hmm. uh, and to be so quick to judge and say, if I were doing that, if I was in your position... I would be doing a lot better. I would be making smarter decisions. Uh, yeah. And I get why that happens. Mm -hmm. But it's just not its not as simple as it, it uh, what you see from the curb, you know, yeah. looking inside actually is. Yeah. Yeah, I still think, like, I don't think we're, act, like, asking for sympathy. And I think fans are entitled to their armchair opinions because, like you said, like, I'm the same with professional sports too. But, yeah, I mean, more so, more than anything, just to shed some insight onto that for those listening. It's tough. Esports is really hard, man. Yeah. It's like you want to have like the tier one biggest names in the game. Everybody knows how good they are. And it's really hard to find like these rookies to come up and play for your team that can be the next Scumpy or the next X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know? Next Faker. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Um. Speaking of... Yeah, I'll save I'll save this other thing for after. But speaking of esports and just games in general, um, Valorant just released or are teasing their new agent, Deadlock. Yeah. Oh, uh, brother, this uh, skin bundle they dropped is fucking electric. It is so good. The Neo Frontier, brother. The animations when you inspect and take out the Marshall or the revolver, probably. Damn near might be without using it yet and buying it and, and going into the range and deathmatch and playing with it. From my perspective, could be one of the best bundles they've ever released. I just saw the sheriff clip, but just flicking that thing, 
just letting it fucking spin. Oh my god, it's, it's nice. It's crazy, like yeah. how how amused human beings can be by things like that. <laughs> and I love it. I'm just drooling as I'm like playing Valorant and like buying this bundle. It is concerning that a bundle that looked that good to me, just seeing it on Twitter, made me want to go back and and just grind. Oh yeah, I played a little Valorant the other day. Um, still fun. Still very fun. <sighs> Casual Joe, just dipping his toes here and there. Yeah. I, uh, I'm uh, i having a hard time, like, balancing. I, I, I haven't been playing a ton of video games, but I just have this internal battle within my own head about what's more fun to play. Is it Valorant or Counter-Strike? Like, Counter-Strike, now that I've been back playing a little bit, certainly will say I think that game is much harder than Valorant. You know, I had a clip where on this podcast where I was like, oh, Valorant and... Counter Striker basically one to one in terms of how it's played, attack mm -hmm. shooter, yada yada yada. They are very very different. The mechanics uh, are more the same, but still very same beast, different animal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, I don't want to say I like Valorant more because it is easier, but I don't have a great answer. And I set myself up to answer a question of my own. Well, I think I like, don't know. I don't know. Counter Strike and Valorant are both great in their own ways, but I do miss playing Valorant, brother. I really do. Valorant aesthetically is just incredible, and the satisfaction of like the headshots and like the headshot like feedback and everything like that. But the pace of Counter Strike and it being much faster is also very fun. I do like the fluidity of Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that this probably wouldn't be the case if I played it more and spent a couple months with it, but it's really hard for me to see enemies like across the way, you know? Yeah. If I'm <laughs> like sitting on bomb on dust and somebody's like head glitching the uh, the ramp at the mm -hmm. garage or whatever it's called, it's, it's really hard for me to see. Like, am I on his head right now? Mm -hmm. But with Valorant, you know, you got the colored outlines... Like, nobody's peeking a corner without you seeing it. Mm -hmm. I think the audio, the headshot feels great. You just watch their body go limp in, in Counter-Strike, and you're like, oh, dude, I knew that was clean. And yeah. in Valorant, Think. it's the audio that you get, and it's, 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 it's a really tough discussion to have. Mm -hmm. Both great games in their own right. For sure. But I do miss playing Valorant. Yeah. <sighs> I just wish I was phenomenal at either of them, but... You could be like you're, I will never. you just you don't lock in and just play one game for a couple months to get your acclimate yourself. You just I can't bounce around to a million different games. I can't. I mean, we were, I even brought it up yesterday. I am just a hundred percent addicted to video games. I've realized I've come to the the conclusion. Yeah, it's like I don't even want to get on, but yeah. here I am grinding Nightmare Dungeons and Diablo before bed. I'm like, just just go to sleep, Joe. Yeah. Looked at my like. You got to protect your brain, brother. That's why I don't even play in my downtime. Yeah, because I know that if I sit here and play Valorant, like if I were to go home today, like the one day this week that I could stream, I know I'm going to play Valorant for eight hours, and it's going to be like I've got hard drugs just straight to the vein. For sure. And then I'm going to be upset and hold resentment towards the responsibilities that I have for Hundred Thieves the next day that won't allow me to play this game mm -hmm. the way that I want to. So I just don't even play. I, I, I have to hold myself back because I know I'll be addicted. Yeah. And everything around me will just crumble down because it's <laughs> yeah. my brain can only work at one speed. The the piles of I'm like laundry. getting itchy, dude. <laughs> Shit, do we go play some Valorant after this? No. <laughs> the piles of laundry pile up. I'm not working out. Sleep time goes down drastically. I looked at my like on my. I actually went to go cancel my gym membership last night, late night, as I'm trying to be more fiscally responsible. And uh, as I'm perusing through the app, they have like a calendar where it shows you like how many active days you've been in the gym and like each calendar month. <laughs> it's like four days in the last like three months. <laughs> and I'm We're like, proud of you, Joe. All right, holy fucking shit. <laughs> Man, it's so hard it's for me. It's, it's so hard for me to have a muzzle on because uh, I'm like nine workouts in now uh, at this gym that I've been going to. And I've worked out consistently for like a year long spurts in my life, a handful of times. Mm -hmm. 
And I know there's people that have been in the gym since they were 18, they're 30 years old like I am now, and they are the most disciplined individuals that have stayed consistent and never taken breaks. And if they have, they got right back into their routine. I'm all in on fitness right now. Good. For me, I went to the gym yesterday at 6 a.m. I went this morning at 6 a.m. When I get home, taking out the garbage, cleaning up after the dogs, taking a shower, shaving, clipping my nails, <laughs> doing all the things that, like, normally when I wake up, I'm like, fuck, I got to go to work, and that's the only thing I can think about right now. None of this is getting done. Mm -hmm. Brother, this routine that I'm putting myself in slowly but surely, like, my body feels stronger, my balance is better, my brain is firing, I got dopamine hitting driving on the way to work, sun's at my back, and I'm just ready to fry. Mm -hmm. I, I I know that everybody says it. If you have a friend that doesn't go to the gym and you're trying to convince them, like, look, the first month's going to be tough. We know this. And I've sat here for literal years just having the same stupid bullshit argument with myself, like, oh, I'm going to be tired and I got to eat more and I got to eat better. Like, you just build it up like it's this huge... Mount Everest that you need to climb, and then I just shit the bed, get really excited about it, don't follow through because I know it's going to be hard and it's going to be different and it's going to be difficult, and I just never end up doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. But I know if I get past that first month, I'm going to love it. I've been there before. I've been addicted. It's it's like mm -hmm. this weird psychological battle that it just, if you have experienced this, you know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. And... Yes, is is there dread at night? That I'm like, oh fuck, it's all it's eight thirty. I just had a full day of work. I just want to sit back, relax, hang out with Haley, and not worry about what time I'm going to bed and what time I'm waking up. You deal with that dread. It's hard, but then you wake up and you just go. You turn your brain off. You just get yourself to fight against that fucking not sound like Goggins Rogan, that inner bitch that's telling you not to do it. Because the reward that you have when you finish that workout and you're driving home and you're about to start the rest of your day, you knew you sat with that dread. You sat with that fucking anguish and that voice in your head telling you, like, let's just cancel in the app and not go. And I carried the boats and the logs today, and I feel fucking fantastic, man. And you're literally shaving years off or, or, or you're bringing years back into your life like mm -hmm. you know in general your body's just getting stronger you look better the confidence is going up everything that you don't like to do throughout the day just gets easier i'm pretty i'm pretty i'm trying tried not to talk about it i try not to talk about it every day because it's like oh nice you went to the gym fuck you i got my own shit i'm dealing with but mm -hmm. it does feel good to like even though i'm just at the start, these workouts have been hard, and I've followed through, and I'm, I got two more days this week. I got my whole week booked up next week, and I got a couple days that the app will allow me to book for the week after that. I'm firing right now. I'm feeling good. Well, You got to get in the gym, Joe. I am, I am slightly aroused right now after that spiel. That was great. I kind of want to – I'm ready to go. Dead ass. Not kidding. Brother, you've been in – incredible shape before bro you're a fucking athlete like that's the hard part for me too because you also Absolutely. fight with the amount of time it's going to take for you to get where you want to be mm -hmm. you know we talked about like the patience that you don't have as a kid and when you get older time moves so quickly mm -hmm. and you're like man i know it's going to take like a, like a year of work for me to look even close to what i want to be and what i want to accomplish yeah you just keep showing up, man. Consistency. I feel so good. Speechless right now. <laughs> but, I mean, you're absolutely right. Because it's, yeah, you get through the first month. But that's always tough. I'm just, you know, I got no excuse other than being mentally weak. Today was my first cardio day that I had. Like, all other sessions have been lifting. But since mm -hmm. I'm booking, like, four to five days a week now, they won't let you lift, like, three days in a row. You, you can play around with it. But I had to do cardio today. The first day that I went for my introductory uh, training with uh, the head trainer who was going to build out my plan and my routine based off the benchmarks that I had, they put me through a test uh, for an hour, had to do all different types of lifts and then cardio. I damn near almost never went back because of the last 
block of that workout and that test was a two minute sprint on a bike. Uh huh. It took me like an hour and a half to finally feel normal again. I I, I almost threw up. I'm surprised I didn't. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why I was dreading this cardio day this morning. Guess what? Seven workouts. I've been walking for the gym. It wasn't nearly as hard. I mean, it was difficult in the moment, but that when I finally finished up, got in my car, I'm like, man, I'm not, I'm not dead right now. I thought I yeah. was going to be in shambles, and I'm good. Yeah. So once you st- and again, uh, not to sound like a broken record, you guys have probably all had this battle in your head. Obviously, the physical progress and like seeing the vascularity in your arm or like. The down lighting, I've got these skylights, and I'm like, whoa, I, I look, I've only been in here for like a month and a half, but I'm kind of cut. Like, you're I can, like, you're like Peter Parker after he gets bit by the spider. Obviously, not as aggressive, but I can, I can see like just the smallest bit of change. But for me, like, I know that's what's going to be the most addictive part for sure. Cause I do, you know, I want to be the best version of myself, and everybody's oh, yeah. got to love themselves enough to want to push themselves to be better. But it's the lack of friction and fatigue and tiredness that i don't have now after my workouts where i'm like oh wow Mm -hmm. just a couple days a week and i'm already feeling better and these workouts are easier Mm -hmm. the weight's obviously up and the the struggle is more difficult in the moment but i don't feel like shit yeah so it's great certainly i'm all in on the gym right now fuck well between that and and the fact that you're I just can't allow you getting in great shape and me not. So, if you want to wait like six more months, I'd, I'd be cool with that. Well, we're, I mean, I'm a lot heavier, you know, so weight, weight doesn't matter. I know. I'm just saying, like, I know you're going to start fucking lifting. And then we're like, hey, how was your workout? Joe's like, oh, I was repping uh, two plates on each side and <laughs> going to have so a, just a big fucking ogre, you know? It's yeah. relative to the body weight. Yeah. But that's the other part that's freeing too. Like, I'm not, you know, when I was in my early 20s, I was doing this to look better. So I had more confidence talking to women. I'm like, I'm five fucking nine. I can be charming and tell a joke, but I don't have my, I'm not walking down the street Prince looking charming. like Brad Pitt. I got to do everything I can to give myself the best chance of a woman looking at me without even hearing me talk. Be like, I could, I'll talk to him. But now I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this shit for anybody, bro. I'm just doing this for myself and my family. I'm like, I gotta be around. I gotta look good. I gotta. If Haley's going to the gym every single day, I, I've been this piece of shit like 50 50. It's a relationship. I can't just be fucking obese. Yeah, I've never been obese, but like, dude, I gotta gotta play the part for sure. Doing this for myself. Good for the heart. Good for the brain. So. Um, I feel, I feel like we all just need to get in the gym, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Last thing I'll say, because I want to accentuate one of the parts that I brought up. Because if you're like me, you'll understand, brother. I would come up with so many excuses, right? And it, again, I know this is more of the same, but like, oh man. I'd be on Google and Reddit, like, do you work out fasted? Like, I want to work out early in the morning, but should I be eating? I know that my body doesn't respond well when I eat first thing in the morning, so how am I going to work out? Like, how am, how am I going to go and do this? What do you guys do? And I'd sit there reading for an entire night, just trying to find some semblance of reassurement, a reassuring guiding hand that somebody feels the same way as I do. And like, oh, man, when I'm done with my workout, like, I got to drink a protein shake. Like, I don't want to have to fucking make that in a, in a fucking blender. And I used to just optimum nutrition, chocolate and water. And it was disgusting, but I did it. But then I would be shitting my brains out. Like, that that protein, the whey just does not sit well with me. So then I'd be bloated for the rest of the day. And then I'd be shitting them four times a day. Like, all these small things that would result from that routine that I'm trying to start would just hold me back. Mm-hmm. Bro, now that I'm in a relationship with Haley and I just see her doing it, I'm like, all right. It's on my calendar. I have to do it. We're not going to do anything fucking different. Just go. Just show up and, and let's see what happens. Now, now that I got bidets in my house, I could shit 10 times a day. No, but brother, like <laughs> with Haley, she's got me using like pea protein, making me a smoothie. Yeah. 
is my thesis been right? Like, do I feel like shit for like 45 minutes after I drink this because I'm drinking, sh having sugar in the morning, which my body didn't respond to? Drinking chalk. It's not even fucking bad, bro. Yeah. Like all these things that I, like small decisions that would hold me back and stop me from doing it. I'm telling you, just fucking go on autopilot, show up and go to the fucking gym. <laughs> just, just go for a fucking month, bro. Challenge yourself and see if you can fight that stupid fucking voice in your head that mm -hmm. I held myself back from listening to it, giving in to my own fucking desires. Bro, face adversity with yourself, fight your fucking self, and just go. You go Set to the, the gym. Set the alarm, go. You go to the gym the more. This is me just talking myself into it right now. Because, again, okay, regardless, don't need to explain. But uh, the point you brought up earlier, too, like every other thing is like a little bit easier during the day. It's because like you go, you do probably the hardest thing you're going to do the whole day as soon as you wake up. Exactly. After that. Everything else is a little more palatable. Bro, I'm a bitch. I promise you, man. Like, I've been a fucking pussy. Like, I would talk myself out of it every day, no matter how much I envision, like, how I'd feel and look when I'm in shape. And I would just always talk myself off the ledge. And now that I've, like, battled and won so far, like, got past the hardest points, it just seems easy now. Like, I don't want to wake up and not go to the gym because then the yeah. rest of my day sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Go. I'm telling you, bro, just win that fight a about couple to, times for a month, and you're going to be locked in. About to be on my Patrick Bateman arc. Bro, let's go. You can always be thinner, look better. Dude, let's go. Yeah. Respect. Shit. Now, let me see that vape. Matt bro. Goggins, baby. Matt fucking Goggins. Bro, I love this fucking kid. I know we played the TikTok. Chet Hanks. That guy yelling. This kid yelling about, go to the fucking gym. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, I watch it every morning. He's got different versions every time. good energy yeah bro and that you know people are going through that battle like you have to fucking do it i'm so i like bro if you are 22 years old just please start now because i i'm only 30 I'm, I'm still pretty young but i'm like man i just left so many years on the fucking table because i was a, being a bitch mm -hmm. didn't want to work hard yeah and i'm like well oh i work hard with my career that's only one part of it bro that career don't matter if you're fucking you got heart problems when you're 55 you're fucking struggling to pick up your kid over your head. I that won't be me. I can't let it happen. Mm -hmm. I gotta see just once, just once in my life. Like if I push myself, what what would I look like? What would I feel like? Yeah, that's facts. Actually. You got people fucking can't even walk, man. They're in wheelchair disabilities that they never asked for. They can't go and do this. I have no excuse. I gotta go that much harder. I got lucky. I'm I'm able. Gotta Max. go do it, bro. I can't leave all this fucking health and wealth. And it's so annoying, bro, when you're not in shape and you're just listening to these people. You see them going to the gym on their Instagram story like, oh, we fucking get it. You're fit. I'm a piece of shit. Don't care. I'm in. <laughs> I'm locked in now. <laughs> yeah. All that fun you were having, I want some now. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? I'm having fun There's now, There's no too. way you can be this happy. Yeah. But guess what? I get it now. Dopamine. Moving the body, baby. Bro, it's... Moral of the story today. It's actually fucking crazy. Society and, like, the routine that we put ourselves in, there's just so much that we're leaving on the table in terms of mental health. Yeah, mental health and... You're going to look better. You're going to feel better. Oh, well, look, I'm, I'm locked in right now. We've been on this for too long. We should end this episode. You should aspire to be... You should look like someone you'd want to sit next to on an airplane. Bro, it's even the small things for me. Like, dude, I look at every photo I've taken for the last four fucking years. Skinny fat. My forearms look like shit, bro. My posture sucks. I just don't look good. Mm -hmm. I just can't wait till my forearms are fucking bulging. The you, confidence boost you get, even you, if you don't look any different, but how you feel. Bro, you see me holding a juvie <laughs> in like a year. 
I'm going to look like... You have some fucking boulders. That's what I'm saying, bro. I want to look like Free a... Free JMO. I want to look like a fucking adult. Yeah. It's going to be nice. I'm locked in, baby. Let's yeah. go. Shit. I'm fucking bricked up right now. Holy fuck. About to slug three of these juvies and fucking dip out of work and go to the gym. Let's watch <laughs> one more. All right. I love this kid. That's bro. I want to get up right now. I want to get up and jump around. Luke is popping. <laughs> I fucking love this kid. <laughs> Should we start a nade shot? <laughs> this kid is electric, right. bro. I love him. He's such a bro. I, he's a chat, and I love it. Should we get a little Nate shot personal fitness uh, public thing going? Whatever. No, 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 no. Hey, I, I already broke. I'd like to see some people post some Nate shot fit pics. No, I already broke. I, I broke my rule. Like I told myself, yo, do not go into work do talking about the gym. Don't go talking to nobody. Bro, real G's move in silence like lasagna. I need to get like three months, four, five, six months in and prove that I stuck with it before I start like chopping Preaching. it up. Huh? Preaching. Yeah, I'm not, bro. I've done fucking eight workouts. That's a lot to me right now. I still think it's, I don't want to talk about it. I just still think anymore. it's important for people to hear it. And I'd like to see some progress because I think that'll give me personal motivation to go keep myself accountable if other people are hopping on the journey with us. I uh, I respect that, but let me get six months in, and then we start talking about hard work and yada yada yada. All right, fine. Joey K Fitness Challenge. <laughs> Let's see it, bro. Tag me if you're working out. Tag me. We'll, I want to see it. We'll track your progress by how well you fill out your wife beater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, dead ass. Go get a size up wife beater, or size down, depending on what you're trying to do. Bulk up or trim. Just start tagging me. That's the other thing too, bro. I have so many clothes in my in my closet that I bought over the years that I won't wear because mm -hmm. I hate the way that it sits on my tits. Why do you and think I'm wearing wife beaters? Why do you think everybody wears a wife beater? You know, high and tight, baby. I'm locked in. Yeah, let's go, Joe. Fuck yeah, let's get in the gym, man. Yeah, bro, we'll come in and dominate the day. Do you know how many times you and I have talked about this shit? I'm doing it right now. I need you with me. My my bad tea, boys for life. My T levels are just bubbling right now, and I'm like jacked up right now. Yo, small thing. I'm waking up bricked up every day now. <laughs> there was like a year where I'm like, I got no libido. Yeah, I gotta go to the doctor. Or my everybody's talking about how men His third nowadays leg have, was like linguini. have like low testosterone. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, do I have low T? Want to get tested? Uh, my testosterone levels are like through the fucking roof. Teed up, baby. It's not healthy. Hundred teed. Hashtag hundred teed. Bro, I pitched it for a different idea yesterday. Adderall capsule, clothing apparel capsule. Sorry to cut you off. I'm just look at. I'm. I'm look we're, what we're you did. To we're me. locked in, bro. Look what you've done. To I'm me. not kidding though. That's I didn't what I'm have, saying. I, I thought my morning wood was done. Hashtag I'm gone for a year. I, I'm wait, bro. I woke up to pee at like four a.m. I'm like, the fuck is going on? <laughs> I went to go sit to pee. You're planking on your toilet to piss, you know? You're the My fucking shit plank. Raise the 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 bowl. <laughs> I swear to God. I had to sit there and clean myself off at 4 a.m. Morningwood's back, dude. And I'm fucking let's go move some shit around. Let's go pick things up and put them down. Like I get it why they do it now. Like I get it. This is, this is just you peeing in the morning. <laughs> I ain't that big. <laughs> Certainly pointing down. Oh. Hunter Thieves, baby. <laughs> Guys, let's all get in. The, yo, they got their fucking run club here at Hunter Thieves. Let's let's start the boats and the logs. Sprinter's channel. body. I don't fucking run, but I will lift some weights Should and hit the bike. pull-ups after this? Yeah. I did lap pull-downs yesterday. I'm pretty sore, actually. Well... Do you think David Goggins wakes up with sore lats and doesn't go rip 5,000 pull-ups? He does. Thanks. All right, guys.
Well, this was probably the most productive but least productive episode we've ever filmed, and I'm here for it. And not every single one's going to... Not every single one. Not every single one's going to be a Oscar-worthy uh, Emmy fucking streamy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe people are still going to VidCon, bro. I, I saw people... <laughs> You facts. went to VidCon. Actually, facts. I could not believe people were still there, bro. Uh, Miss me with that. I ain't never, I, I've never even been. Skydiving, VidCon. Don't go to VidCon. Same level of built for comfort. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully we didn't bore you with all this, but uh, this is what's going on in our lives right now. We got to be honest. 100 teed, baby. Hashtag 100 teed. Send right. us your fit pics. Well, hopefully the white theaters. in September... At some point in September, we film an episode, and we'll, we'll be like three months into the gym. Yeah. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Let's carry the boats and logs, gentlemen. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for tuning in, and YouTube. We'll see you fudging later. Goodbye. Free jam out.